Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm really excited to get into this video because we are going to talk about how to set up an ebb and flow system to hydroponically grow your own veggies and herbs, which is an awesome way to be sustainable and to feed yourself. There's several ways that you can grow your own food, and there's also a lot of reasons why you should. Among those reasons are health benefits, cost effectiveness by saving money from not going to the grocery store for these things, and a lower carbon footprint if you're one of those people who usually buys your produce in single-use plastic. Now, there's multiple ways you can grow your seeds hydroponically, but I choose to use a system called Ebb and Flow. We're going to get into that as we go, but first of all, let's start out with the basics of what you're going to need. First, you're going to need your germinated seeds, and if you haven't purchased your seeds yet, I really do recommend 99 Heirlooms for their affordable seeds, and they have them at an amazing price. Usually, it's just 99 cents. I'm not affiliated with the company, but I really, really love them, and their customer service was absolutely amazing when I was working with them. So for help with how to germinate your seeds, please see this video that I did all about hydroponic seed germination, and I'm going to put a link right here. So once you've got your germinated seeds, next you need a hydroponic system set up. These can be crafted in all sorts of manners using PVC pipes or materials that you can acquire at your local home improvement store, but personally, I just purchased a hydroponic system online that came with easy to assemble PVC pipes that did not require any glue, which is really important for not getting chemicals into your produce. So my system actually comes with 104 different holes that you can use to put your plugs in. So this is where I'll put the rapid rooters that I germinated my seeds in. I was lucky enough that my PVC hydroponic setup came with a small pump and some tubing to pump that water into the system, but if you don't have a kit like I did, you just need to purchase both of those. So the pump included in my system has a timer on it where you can elect how often the ebb and flow system will turn on. And the basic premise of an ebb and flow system is just that the pump turns on and when it does, it floods the space where all the plugs are with nutrient water that's being oxygenated by that pump pumping. So mine is set to five minutes every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, the timer will automatically go off and it will pump water up into the system and kind of freshly oxygenate all of the little plants that are sitting in there for five minutes and then turn off. This you also need a bucket for a reservoir, so my system didn't come with this and most of them won't. Totes work really well, I'm just using a 5 gallon Home Depot bucket that I already had, but if you do choose this option, you might need to use risers to allow the system to be tall enough to accommodate the height of the bucket. Luckily, I had both risers and the 5 gallon Home Depot bucket on hand, but you can easily substitute what I did for a wider, shorter tote bucket. The system I purchased did come with a bunch of net cups which rest perfectly inside the plug holes with a little adaptation engineered into the design for the flat surface at the top of the PVC pipe system. These work really well, but I elected not to use the styrofoam plant plugs that they came with for the majority of my germinated seedlings since I germinated them with these General Hydroponics Rapid Rooters, which I really highly recommend. They're made out of a bonding material and peat moss and it's really good for allowing seeds to germinate. If you are outdoors growing hydroponically, there's just one last step, which is to acquire the nutrient water materials. I use Clonex as well as the General Hydroponics 3 Series, and this is a little bit of an upfront investment, but I've had my bottles for about a year now, and I've hardly dented the volume of liquid inside, so the amount needed for the dilution is really quite small, and a little bit goes a long way. The cool thing is on the back of the bottles, it shows you these measurements, and basically helps you determine how much you should add based on what you want your plants to do. So as we go on, we'll modify this, but for now I'm starting with a quarter of a teaspoon of each solution per one gallon of water and one teaspoon of flora grow per gallon of water just to stimulate vegetative growth. If you're growing indoors like I am, your setup is going to require a few more things. Firstly, grow lights. When you're growing vegetables and herbs in a highly controlled indoor environment, we have to compensate for the natural sunlight. There are three layers to my hydroponic setup because I have one hanging light over the top tier and then I have a clamp-on lamp on each of the two tiers below to allow for more even light distribution. And I'll go into how I set all this up as we go on in the video. Now, it's not 100% necessary, but I super, super recommend that you invest in a grow tent if you're trying to grow long-term in high volumes or if you're trying to grow through the year in a place that gets cold like here in Ohio. You can certainly find grow tents in all sizes and price ranges on the internet or at your local hydroponic shop. Personally, I have a larger one. It's 8 feet by 4 feet, and it accommodates all the projects that I want to get into, which is really exciting for me. I can easily fit several of these hydroponic systems inside. I plan on setting up a second one pretty soon here so that I can grow indoor houseplants from seed on the other side of the grow tent. 
The reflective material inside of the grow tent is made in a way that helps to maximize light absorption by the plants, and the tent zips up to allow for it to keep light, humidity, and temperature in, but keeping pests and unwanted environmental influences out. Finally, I recommend that you have both a fan and a heater. These don't need to be expensive by any means, both of mine were about in the $20 range, but having an adequate air circulation will ensure that your seedlings and plant get adequate oxygen supply. And a heater is really useful if you live in a colder environment or if you're like me and you have your system set up in an often cold basement. Remember, everything we're doing is done in order to simulate the experience of plants growing in nature, but we're just doing them in a contained, highly controlled environment. Okay, phew, now that we've gotten through all the materials, let's dive into how we set up an ebb and flow system. Because I like to make things easy, I'm gonna break it down into five simple steps. Step one is that you need to assemble a hydroponic system. Luckily, like I mentioned, I purchased a hydroponic system that came with pretty clear instructions and pre-cut PVC pipes and elbows. But if you're crafty and don't wanna pay for a commercially designed one, you can likely analyze the setup photos or find a diagram for how to create the proper cuts of PVC to assemble it yourself. Just make sure all the pieces are tightly fitted together and avoid glue if possible. One of the perks of the system I purchased is that no glue is needed. Once all the elbows and pipes are fitted together, ensure that there are tight fits by going back over and pushing them together. Put some elbow grease into it because you really want to make sure there's no leaks. Then you need to position a clean bucket underneath the draining pipe, which is the lower one, and affix the tube that will pump water into the top of the system to the nozzle at the topmost position. Then secure your pump, which usually has suction cups on the bottom, to the bottom of your reservoir in the bucket, and connect the tube that emanates from the top of the hydroponic setup to the mouth of the pump so that the water flows from there adequately. I'll likely be investing in a second pump because mine, while functional, is a little bit small and for the size of the hydroponics I'm using, I'd prefer more oxygen pumping to be happening. Step two, transplant the plugs. Now take your germinated seeds, I germinated them in the rapid rooters, so then we're going to transplant them into the system. You can easily use the styrofoam inserts like the ones that were included with my system and the net cups, but because I chose to root with the general hydroponics rapid rooters, I stuck with those. And my lovely boyfriend and I tried to cut the edges of the plugs with scissors so that they would snugly and comfortably fit into the net cups already wedged into the system. I have to give my boyfriend credit for doing this because originally I started to just shove the net cups. Uh, out of the way and started putting the rapid rooters inside which you don't really want because it's going to be more structurally sound to have them in a net cup that kind of maintains their structure. I keep track of which plant is which by a spreadsheet that correlates with the design of the system and before we actually germinated it I kind of wrote everything out in a, a spreadsheet and we kind of went from there and so when we transplanted it we kept track of which ones were which. If you want to keep track of it, it's a good idea to plan that out beforehand while you're germinating because once they are out of the packets and in the little plugs, it's going to be really hard to determine what's what. Step three is to fill the bucket with water and test the flooding system. You want to fill your bucket with filtered water, we use a giant inverter for this, and then ensure that you keep the water level high enough to submerge the filter. If the filter is not covered, you're going to likely break it. Test the flooding system before adding nutrient water so you don't spill nutrient water everywhere if there are leaks in the pipes that need to be reinforced. Once the plant plugs are secure, just turn your timer on. Most pumps come with a little control button that has options for timers. I turned mine on during the testing process to pump for 15 minutes. You should immediately notice water flooding the tube that comes out of the pump and trickling into the top of the hydroponic system. You want to follow the water as it goes down the first tube, turns the corner through the elbows and into the next tube and so on. This will take several minutes so just be patient. You want to follow the water closely at the beginning to make sure if there are any leaks you can catch it right where it is and reinforce the system. This happened to us while testing. One of the connections at the elbows was just too loose and broke when water was added and we just basically jammed the pieces back together more tightly and cleaned up the spilled water. You need to keep an eye on your reservoir as the system fills. As the water is pumped upwards, you may find that you have to continue to add more water to the bucket to ensure the pump isn't covered at any point. Once the water is passed through the entire system and is draining back into the reservoir or bucket, your hydroponics flood system has passed. It's time to add the nutrients. A soil-free system is wonderful for efficiency, less cleanup, and fewer materials used, but because the soil typically provides nutrients, we need to compensate. I'm personally a really big fan of General Hydroponics. They have a 3 Series that's great for indoor houseplants and hydroponic veggies and herbs alike. 
I like to start at the original recommended dose for seedlings, which is a quarter of a teaspoon of each component per one gallon. I go a little heavier on flora grow because the seedlings have germinated to the point where they're ready for some structural stimulation and vegetative growth. This is the green one. As your plants progress through different stages of their life cycle, we can adjust the amount of each respective nutrient to accommodate what we're hoping to inspire them to do. For now, we're going to keep it relatively simple with about one teaspoon of flora grow per gallon and about a quarter of a teaspoon of flora bloom and flora micro per gallon. Always start with flora micro, which is the dark purple one when mixing your solution. I also add a bit of Clonex to the nutrient water in the ratio of 5 to 10 milliliters per liter. Again, this is an upfront investment, but if you follow the dilution recommendations, one bottle will actually make just over 25 gallons of solution. This is going to last you a long time. This is a plant nutrient that's formulated for rooted clones and seedlings, and it contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and other essential elements that are needed for vigorous growth. It also has vitamin B1 to prevent transplant shock. If you add the nutrients while the pump is running, it's going to help with the mixing, but it doesn't hurt to give it a stir as well yourself. Now your reservoir is all set up with the appropriate nutrient water. Step 5. Add lights, heater, and fan if growing indoors in your grow tent. So finally, if you're growing indoors, you're going to need to add some elements that mimic the natural environment these veggies and herbs thrive in. Sunlight, warmth, and airflow, namely. I use a grow tent because when growing indoors, it's tremendously helpful with creating an isolated, controlled environment. Especially if you're setting up camp in a basement like me, where you want to keep your plants isolated from any potential pests or light pollution. Giving the plants adequate light is just as important as allowing them a thorough dark cycle when the lights are not on, which is another reason I really like the grow tent. For my setup, given that it has three tiers, I like to have one hanging light overhead and then clamp a grow light onto each of the lower two tiers to allow for even more light distribution. I set these on automatic timers to come on for 12 hours a day. This may increase as I continue, but since the seedlings were germinating and sitting for a while, I don't want to shock them with too much light all at once. The grow tent I purchase has convenient drawstring holes in the side for a small fan to vent air. Airflow is really important because it can get musty and static inside the grow tent, and airflow pumping in from outside will really help to keep your plants even more oxygenated and healthy. Additionally, the slight breeze from the fan will help your plants to maintain their structure rather than just falling limp. Think about it. In nature, plants withstand winds and rain, which in turn contribute to their structural integrity. Plants that are never tussled at all may be weaker and less fruitful. I inserted the fan into the respective hole. Lastly, I installed a small fan-driven heater. I did this because my basement sits at around 60 degrees Fahrenheit when not monitored, and that's a bit too cold for where I want my plants to be. Just make sure to carefully set up your system so that you avoid fire hazards. I keep my heater on medium, and I try to keep the temperature at around 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure that you keep your heater facing away from any direct plants. I do this because you don't want to blast heat directly onto your plants and over dry them out. Now, if you or somebody you know are not an auditory learner and you prefer to read about how to set up the ebb and flow system, please feel free to check out my website, www.loreloon.com. I typically post blogs every Friday when I post my YouTube videos, and I usually go into a little bit more detail on the website than I'm able to in the YouTube video, just outlining every single detail of the process and giving clickable links. So please feel free to check that out. And if you found anything helpful or interesting or useful in this video, please, please, please like, comment, share, subscribe. It really helps me to build my channel. And I love to interact, so please leave a comment below with your opinions and your setup, and let's compare. Is it you? Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Hi, Bubba. Hey guys, welcome to Beanie's MTV Cribs. 
Today we're gonna to be showing you around. So this is his Christmas tree, Beanie. Okay, he is not, he doesn't really have much to say about that. Here are his little trees. He has a little bit more to say about those. Okay, would you like to show them your stocking? That's his stocking. Okay. And then you wanna show them your favorite plant ever. Wow, Bubba. That's a good plant. Look at the sweet little face. I mean, oh my goodness. It's so hard to be this adorable. Oh my goodness. Be careful. <laughs> Bubba, don't knock over my cup. <gasps> Be careful, Bubba. 